that's the secret to like life, right? Is getting out there and like putting yourself out there. So that that's the kind of work that I, I'm uniquely good at too, is getting out and networking. It's it's probably my only superpower, honestly. And so like once you teach them these things, they don't they don't do silly stuff. It just is educating, mm -hmm. train them that way. Uh, mm -hmm. But the better you get at hiring, the more talented they are when you get them in the first place. Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Be able to willing to sacrifice and know what it takes. That there's sacrifices, right? Right. Yeah. That these are the so, sacrifices yeah. of time. You sacrifice money, but then there's also you have to realize, like what you and Vinny were talking about, is why are we doing this? Like I love <laughs> the fact that I can put out a video, and I have people find that video and then book a call with me. To me, that's yeah. fun. Accountability and consistency, and you know if we can just definitely don't have a big list of things I want to change. The mindset is number one, of course. You know, if I want to have a different year 2024, I got to have a little bit different mindset. Now, Jeff, um, what are you doing right now? Like, what does your team look like? Or most of your, is just a really partnerships? Do you, how do you outsource? How do you delegate? Yeah, so, um, yeah, most of what I do is partnerships. In fact, I've never bought a piece of real estate other than my primary residence without a partner. I've always, I've always been a strong believer in partners. And I think it's really important to have the right partners. Um, mm -hmm. My two primary partners um, are both own property management companies. Um, that's not um, necessarily by design, but that's been a really good thing for me because the property manager uh, that's completely aligned with you because you're owning the same percentage as them uh, are going to, mm -hmm. they're going to pay more attention to the asset than, than, than they would if it was someone else's. It's just, it's just the reality of the situation. So that's one thing that I've been really, really cognizant of. Um, I don't really, uh, the way that I've structured the business um, from the very beginning was that I didn't want, I wanted it to free up my time. So I actually took um, this tip a, several years ago from uh, Brandon Turner from Bigger Pockets. And Brandon told me one time, he said, you know, the, the secret to being a successful entrepreneur is just um, get really good at something as fast as you can, because that's the easiest way to delegate that task. When you're really good at something, it's, uh, it's easier to understand who can do that task for you. And so the goal is just to constantly go into whatever you're doing with the idea that you want to get it good enough at it that you can delegate it to someone who can take it over for you. And it's just all about getting rid of things that you do. So the reason I live in Puerto Rico right now, uh, unlike what most people think, it isn't because of taxes, it's because I love it here, but I'm able to do that because I don't really have any seriously pressing day-to-day -day obligations. You know, I mean, I, there are times when I have things I need to do, but I can do them whenever I want because I've structured my life in that way. Um, and, and that's true even with like, you know, I have a, a VA that does a lot of my social media stuff. Um, I, I I just was like, I don't want to spend time. On this. And so I just constantly am trying to figure out ways to offload tasks. Um, and, and as a result of that, I've freed up so much time that I have time to do the things that are really important. Um, you know, the family stuff, the the enjoyments of personal life stuff, but also the the things in the business that only I can do, right? The things mm -hmm. that that require my involvement. Um, you know, I can get really good at those things and figure out how to offload that task as well. So that, that's been my strategy for several years now. So how much time do you spend in, in working on your business? Like, what does that look like in the average day for you? Uh, zero hours in an average day. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, like I, I really, I spend very little time in the business. Like, um, you know, when we're in the middle of a capital raise, I spend more time. Um, when we're analyzing a new deal, I spend more time. Um, and then when we're doing like quarterly reports, I spend more time. So there's, there's periods of time during the month, during the, um, during the year where I'm working a little bit more, but, um, you know, there's lots of times when if I, if I didn't do anything for, you know, the entire day, it wouldn't affect the business at all. That's um, awesome. So, yeah, it's 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 actually again, it's from having really good partners. I have more hands-on operational partners, um, and also it's from you know setting it up in a way that that you know people are going to report to me you know once once a week or something and tell me what's going on. I'm going to read those things, and if everything looks good, I I send a thanks email. That's literally like one line, you know, <laughs> like here's here's my leasing report that I get every Friday, and it says here's all the properties, here's here's what, you know, vacancies we have, here's how we're marketing them, here's the pricing, here's how long it's been on the market. Now I can just look at it in a minute or two and say, yeah, okay, you know what, we need to make these three adjustments and I'm done. What's the biggest thing you've struggled with in your career? Uh, and like, how did you like kind of see the, 
you know, the, the, the rainbow in the distance that made you had a realization that was the biggest shift in your business? Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, I actually, you know, some people may know this, but I was diagnosed with leukemia in 2008. Um, and I thought I had weeks, maybe months to live if I was lucky. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, now we're in 2024. So I, I outlived that, you know, life expectancy that I had at that time. And, and, but it, it, it changed my thinking. So when I started investing in real estate, which wasn't until 2010, um, and right after filing bankruptcy, the, the leukemia drove me into bankruptcy. I was a bankruptcy attorney that ended up filing bankruptcy. Once all I went through that, all that trauma, I said to myself, you know what? Like, um, one, I need to get a job so I have predictable income. And so I went and took a corporate job. And then I said, but the goal is to get out of the corporate job as fast as I can. And so I started building the business on the side from the beginning with the idea that I needed time freedom because I didn't know how much time I was going to have left. In the early days, I thought, you know, I'm on borrowed time all the time. Now I'm pretty confident that that I beat leukemia. Uh, but it's still a, you know, ever present thing. I even just last week, I, I you know, I went for my annual appointment and I get a little nervous when I'm sitting there waiting for my final blood results and say, mm -hmm. you know, is it okay? But but because of that daily reminder that I had for so long, taking chemotherapy, doing all the treatments and doctor's appointments and stuff, I just always wanted to structure the business in a way <clears> that <throat> wasn't taking a lot of my time. Thanks. That was good. Beautiful, uh, beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, yeah Vinny, Oh, I was what... going to ask you, brother. Okay, I know sure. you've been asking. Yeah. <laughs> so please tell us, you know, answer to your question. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, I've struggled a lot. I mean, mentally with, I think, um, with frustrations in your business, you know, and figuring out how do you actually get out of the business, right? Like we all kind of, I think a lot of us have the desire to like build something where we can do what Jeff's doing. Like I just mm -hmm. going to check the boxes at the end of the day because I have a team and right. Like that's the majority of people out there. That's what the, you know, they want. Right. Yeah. And so I've, so over, over the years, I kept on doing the same things over and over again. And I'd always get good results, but I'd never get the really great results. So I think I really had to take a deep, you know, like, it, what's the definition of insanity? You keep on doing the same stuff. And it's just like starting to do little little things. And this is, good, this is actionable to anybody. Like, I used to leave my calendar open. You know, if I had an appointment, they couldn't book. But other than that, I had a wide open calendar, meaning I was ready to take calls because I'm a sales guy. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous, right? So now I, I, I made that window smaller. It gives me a lot of freedom in the morning to really do, you know, high paying activities. I think that was my big, big clarity moment. Like, and also just really value, valuing my time more. I spend so much time with people, what I'll call tire kickers. And I just, not that I don't want to help everybody. They can watch my podcast. We put out thousands of hours of content. But I mean, like now I have to respect my time more because, you know, at the end of the day, my time is important the time I can spend with my family, all these things. So I think understanding your value and, and respecting your time is, is, is crucial too. Cause I've helped lots of people and I love helping people. I want to always help people, but I also know that I need to respect my myself and say, Hey, like, you know, I am busy. Like I couldn't just go call my doctor right now. I'm going to get a secretary. I'm going to maybe get a call back a day later or two later, two days later. They're not just going to, you know, text, right. We're in this whole urgency thing now. Your tech, mm -hmm. your phone's blowing up. You're, we're all stressed because we feel like we have to respond to people. So the, yeah. as you can start pushing yourself away from that and putting up barriers and walls, and I think this rolls into delegation, right? Like, why do I have to answer my emails? Why do I have to answer my phone? Why can't there be somebody that does that? And that's a perfect mm -hmm. reason why I have three full-time VAs right now. Mm -hmm. So I think really just really working on those systems and then figuring out, okay, what do I need in cash flow where I don't necessarily need to, you know, have a job anymore? That's the key, right? What do you have in reoccurring revenue that's pretty much as passive as possible? So, like, if you have a third-party property management that's doing good or they're a partner in the deal and you're, you're checking your KPIs, what else do you have to do? As long as they're performing, yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, is when they don't perform, that's when it becomes a nightmare. But I think that's like the goal, yeah. the, the progression of anybody out there. And I can say being in my mid forties is the time where I think you really have a lot of realizations in your life. You're like, one is I'm going to die. I'm not invincible. And what can I do to kind of get me where I, I want to go? And what do I really want? What do you really want in life? And I think that's really important too. So I think 
I think it took me to my mid forties to figure out that. And I'm glad I did because it, it does get frustrating. And so that's why it's good to have people in your network that you can learn from, right? I can ask Vinny questions, Alex, Jeff, you know, people that have done some really good stuff with their, their lives. And that's kind of like what I've struggled with the most and what I'm in 2024, I'm most excited about doing is really one is, is not having limiting beliefs and going, going large and also outsource, delegate, create systems and valuing my time this is my big t- takeaways. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Bo. I know we've been discussing, you know, we meet every week, Fridays, and it's so exciting, inspiring. The biggest thing is the clarity. I know you brought it up and it's so important that we really, really, really look at what we want in life, right? What success means to us. And lots of our guests who will be dropping these really great hacks this whole month of January each one, one each day, you know, in the go high level, we'll be archiving it also. The key thing is that let's buy back time for family, for relationships and not be when people email us or call us, it's at their convenience. So we should not be just and I'm guilty of it. I just say, let me just take care of it right now, you know, but that should not be. So I'm going to get better and better and better this year to really buy back more time, freedom, and then spending more time with the memories, making memories with the family, with the people we love. Why are we working so hard? Why? I mean, that's really coming in my life at 71. I'll be 72 this year, you know, in August. It's just coming back to me that, you know, why, Vinny, why you want bigger mountain to climb and things like that, all these businesses and everything. Let's just clarify and then focus and then delegate, right? And accountability. I know you brought it up too, but, you know, we were discussing. So the four pillars, you know, clarity, focus, delegation, and accountability make sure that everything you delegate it's done properly so there are a lot of great ideas will be coming this is just the kickoff we are doing today january 1st yeah i do want to point out too if sometimes i think about vinny i go well why does vinny work he doesn't really need to work anymore you know why does a guy like vinny work because he likes what he's passionate about it right like so i don't think i love to work too I, i it's part of me i like to to just put deals together um, uh-huh. and so you also got to think how you're wired too. Cause like, you know, it's a lot of people at Vinny's age might say, Hey, I'm good. I'm done. I'm going to go sit <laughs> on the beach. But also <laughs> Vinny wouldn't be happy in life if he wasn't doing this, right? Like yeah. he, this is yeah. what really fires him up. He still takes uh-huh. five vacations a year. He, he walks every day. So I go, okay. Like, you know, if you want to have energy at 70, like Vinny, you take notes. Like, what is he doing? He's walking every day, right? Yeah. He's exercising. He's uh doing things eating that make right him... eating yeah. right is so important so important yeah, yeah no <laughs> yeah like, totally so it's just pretty interesting to see like because not everybody wants to do what vinny's doing so you got to pick your lane i think is the important thing right like what makes you happy like i don't know jeff's probably never really going to do a, a huge syndicate like a 50 million dollar deal he likes to pay in the one to five space and have he only needs yep. a couple investors right versus vinny's kind of like doing huge deals that you know, not everybody wants to do that. I don't know if I sure. ever want to even syndicate a deal myself, right? I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it seems. Here's a question for Alex. If somebody's watching this now or in the future, what do you see like between all of your friends, like your successful friends? What's like the common den- denominator you see that why some people are winning and why some people aren't winning? What is that? Why some people are winning and why some people aren't? I would say that the people that have been successful in my life that are around me, they are grinders. They just, no matter what you throw at them, they just grind it out. Mm -hmm. And I believe that at the beginning, you need some of that grit, right? People are like, oh, you got to focus on happiness. It's it's great, but you got to get to the point where you can, I believe suffer a little bit, sacrifice, Mm -hmm. be able to willing to sacrifice and know what it takes that there's sacrifices, right? When we work long hours, you're probably not partying like your other friends, right? Mm -hmm. When you are, when we're filming this, we're not with our family, right? These are the sacrifices 
of time, you sacrifice money, but then there's also, you have to realize like what you and Vinny were talking about is why are we doing this at the end of the day? Yeah. Are we doing this for our family? Right. There's yeah. a bigger why than just the money is, is how I see it is, yeah. is people who are only doing it to count papers. They're, they're, they're not as fulfilled mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. one who have the clarity and are really grinding towards a specific goal. Yeah. And they they're passionate about it. Yeah, the money comes, but they 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 go get it. Thank you. So true. Yeah. So true. We love life. You know, I was going to say that. I think for us to really be happy, happy in every aspect of our life, happiness, or really making sure again, it just comes out to clarity. I, at the age of seventy-one, I mean that word clarity which, you know, Bo and I have been talking, Bo, thanks for introducing that word, because I was saying focus, but focus on wrong things can get you in trouble. Focusing on wrong things will take you down. Focusing on wrong things, but the clarity is so important. And the why, like you just said, Alex, you know. I mean, the big thing is probably now, 2024, as we start the whole year, please let us everybody take some time. And on a plain sheet of paper, you know, just start again and why? And then I think by really understanding the why will come the answers and the wheel of life with every aspect of life. We would love to share that. I know a lot of people have heard about, you know, where do you stand from one to 10 in each aspect of our life, right? It's the spokes, you know, that goes around. Yeah, yeah, please go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I want to circle back to Jeff now because Jeff, okay, you're, you're, you're in your 40s. Um, you're what I would call financially free. You got enough cash flow to live and you probably don't, you know, you could live a good life without ever doing another deal per se. Right. You know, maybe do some 1031 exchanges. Talk to me about like the journey getting there. Cause I think like we, people hear that and they're like, well, that's Jeff. And I'm not, you know, I I'm yeah. doing my first deal now, or I'm doing my second deal or I'm launching a business. You know, would you say that you had a lot of grit starting to get this thing going? I mean, like, you know, somebody that's working a W-2 job, makes 70, 80 grand a year, 100 grand, barely getting by, right? Living in an expensive area. <laughs> they see a guy like, they hear that like, oh, well, I'm living in Puerto Rico and I, you know, I don't really need to work. You know, I do, you know, check-ins and that kind of stuff. You know, they get kind of like disheartened, like I'll never be able to do it. But I think they also, it's like the iceberg, right? Like nobody knows Jeff's story. Of, I mean, it, it, it wasn't overnight that you built this. It was an 18 year, 16, 17 year career of building and stacking deals. Just talk about, you know, how you were able to parlay these deals and grow the trajectory to get where you're at today. You know, so the, the thing is, like, um, it, it all ties back to what, what Vinny and Alex were just saying, right? Like, like, you have to do something you're passionate about because you're going to put in long hours. Um, yeah. I was a weirdo when I was 15, I would sneak out of my room late at night to watch late night television and not, not what people would think. I was watching like infomercials on how to buy real estate with no money down by Carlton Sheets, you know, like 15 years old. I, I, I begged my parents to buy me this infomercial so I could, you know, so, you know, the course so I could learn about buying real mm -hmm. estate with no money down. And I would, when I was 17 or 18, I would drive around town and I would look at run down buildings and think about well, how can I buy this? How can I figure this out? You know, like, like my whole life has been about focusing on real estate. And I mean, hundreds, hundreds thousands, probably maybe tens of thousands of hours studying real estate books, listening to podcasts, going on podcasts, doing things like we're doing now. And every time I'm always listening, what can I learn? How can I get additional information? Um, and, and how can I make my business better? Uh, and and that was the starting point, right? That's just the foundation stuff. And, that, and then and then on top of that, I had to figure out how to get that first deal, you know. And I, and I said I went bankrupt in 2010, um, right after I got sick. And I bought my first piece of investment real estate in 2011, right? I went from mm -hmm. bankrupt to being a real estate investor, no credit, no money. Um, and I'm like, I need to figure out how to how to make enough money to. Um, you know, to get that first investment. And then once we did that, you know, it was like, okay, I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to do another one. And and the reason I was able to do it is because I stayed on it the whole time. And I kept looking for deals. I spent my spare time, you know, lunch breaks at work, looking at MLS, you know, all that stuff. 
right? Um, when I quit working my corporate job, I wanted to get into, I, I had to have about 56 units of single family houses at that time. When I quit working my corporate job, I got, I started driving Uber around Chattanooga to learn where all the apartment buildings were. I thought, you know, if I ride around and I'm driving around in a Mercedes S500, you know, and picking people up at apartment buildings and dropping them off at their work and stuff like that. And and whenever I would pick someone up or drop them off in an apartment building, I'd say, hey, tell me about the apartment. What are, what kind of amenities do you have? What do you do? You know, like, like how long have you lived there? Like, I'm trying to learn about real estate all the time because I really believe to be successful in any kind of business, you have to look for um, what I call asymmetrical risk and reward. And, and the way you do that is, you, you, you get compensated for, I mean, all returns are a function of two things, right? The risk free rate of return and then a market risk premium. That's 100% of, of your return. And so you're going to get compensated for the risk that you're taking. And the trick, I think, is to reduce your personal risk and still get compensated for market risk. Then you have an asymmetrical return. You're getting a better return than the actual risk you're taking. And mm -hmm. one of the ways you do that is really learn a lot about the market, really learn a lot about the asset class that you're in. You said earlier, I might never do, you know, $30 million apartment deals. That, that's true. I might not. But the reason I do the deals that I do now is I understand them really, really, really well. Wow. And I that's think the, if I yeah. understand it really well, I'm getting paid market risk, but I'm actually taking less risk personally to do that deal. It's one of the reasons mm -hmm. I, I like that particular asset class. That's one of the reasons I'm in Puerto Rico now. I've been starting the market in Puerto Rico for three years. I think there's a ton of opportunity here. Um, and I recently began the process of starting a couple of businesses here on the island uh, because mm -hmm. I've been here long enough to, to, to start to get to that point where I feel comfortable. Like I know people that just jump in and start doing stuff and there's nothing wrong with that strategy, but I've always been really conservative. I want to really understand what I'm doing, especially if I'm taking investor money. If I'm taking my own money, I can take a lot more risk than I can if I'm mm -hmm. taking, you know, Bo's money or Alex's money or Vinny's money. Or yeah. wait, we have we have a new person joining us today, although he yes, says it's Vinny yes, Chopra, yes. but I know it's not. <laughs> no, I, would, I would love to welcome. Welcome, Gualter, Gualter Amarello. We do Abundance Mindset on every Thursday morning live show, which is we've been doing it for about a year and we'll be continuing 2024, 25. We are in the process of making 100 millionaires, you know, and that's the key right there. So we have been uh, really fortunate. I've been fortunate to really get inspired by Gualter. And we do a lot of things together, like Bo and I do show on Fridays. And then on Wednesdays, I'm doing Mentoring the Youth show. And then we are starting a new show on Tuesdays. <laughs> Vinny's got so much time. What to do? That's called Desi Money. So Desi Money is, Desi means Indian, by the way, and Pakistani and South Indian. So we are starting a new show, Farooq and I, on Tuesdays. It's called Desi Money with Vinny and Farooq, which is going to be a show in our language. And we'll be inviting guests in regional languages and so on. <laughs> so cool. welcome, welcome, Gualter, brother. So let's ask Gualter some questions. Yeah, I got one right here. I'm going to serve him up here with a question here. <laughs> um, all right. In, in 2024, what tools, software or processes are you most excited to implement in your business uh, for this coming year and why? So there are a few. And I think everybody right here in this call and everybody listening right now is getting into AI. It's a, a huge opportunity for all of us. Uh, for us in the real estate space, AI has a, a little bit of a different purpose for uh, our business, right? You think about like tenant management, we're all using software to manage tenants. So uh, mm -hmm. I am very satisfied and interested in uh, Appfolio, Buildium, and uh, those two are the primary ones we're using for our property management. But there's some new updates that are coming to those. Uh, another one is ChatGPT, which I hate saying it, but I use it every day. I know Vinny uses it every day. Like we're constantly, <laughs> constantly using it. It's, it sounds so over, like beat up so much, but we use it very heavily. Uh, so I, I have to admit it. And uh, Opus Pro, which is one that Vinny told me about, it chops up our videos. So even though it's not really like real estate related, it kind of is because capital raising is all about who knows you, how many people you know understand what you're doing. So we all have to kind of teach and train in order to raise more capital. So Opus Pro is just, uh, so I thank you, Vinny, for sharing that one with me. I actually it, shared it takes... that with Vinny. So you yes, can thank yes. me. <laughs> and and I, I, I got that tip from one of Evan Carmichael's, who's a big YouTuber. I think so. Very big YouTuber. I'm yeah. in one of his uh, groups, but anyways, he's a big mm -hmm. YouTuber. I, and one of his guys told me it. 
but Opus uh, Opus uh, Pro, which is amazing, right? And that, I think that's it the is perfect beautiful. Point. I want to say, you know, there's a really critical point here, Bo, is, you, you know, we just went on this chain of who told what to this. This is actually why I do these things, right? Like what I was saying earlier about like spending all the time learning, like every mm -hmm. time I go to a meeting, every time I come on a, a Zoom or a webinar or whatever, I'm always trying to like pick that stuff up, right? So like I wrote, yeah. I wrote that down, like Opus Pro, I got to look into this, sounds amazing, but, but that it doesn't. It, it doesn't stop there. Like every time mm -hmm. you see something, every time you watch a piece of content, every time mm -hmm. you talk to somebody, you, you're you're like one tip away from changing your life. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, it's good to see you again, Golter. Right? It's good been a long you, time since we've actually talked. I think we saw <laughs> each other last at the multifamily network that um, Rod Cleef oh. was running. That was the last yeah, time. I think I think so. Wow, wow, wow. Beautiful. In person Beautiful. events, right? You got to go to in person uh, events. Oh, yeah. It, that's exactly right. Like, <laughs> you meet people, you know, you get to go on their shows, you get to know them. I mean, this is, you know, we, we talk about this a lot, but like, but that's, that's the secret to like life, right? Is getting out there and like putting yourself out there. So that, that's the kind of work that I, I'm uniquely good at too, is getting out and networking. It's, it's probably my only superpower, honestly. That definitely I'm, is a superpower of yours. Yeah. Uh, Jeff is like the, what an amazing, <laughs> networker like the guy and he's a connector i mean that's a yeah. that's another skill i mean i think like just going out and like how i met Vinny eight nine ten years ago i, I was at ten a, years a, back. i was at a walnut creek real estate event and i yeah. meet this indian dude <laughs> and he's just like all happy and i'm like all right like hey let's go to lunch i bought him a sandwich little <laughs> did i know he should have bought me the sandwich and we've been friends and you know oh. It's been you know, wonderful, wonderful journey. And that's the key. You know, I think the thing is we need to be really going out and enriching everybody's life that we touch because you never know, never know how much joy that's going to bring at business and partnerships. You know, I have so many businesses because of relationships and that's the key, you know, so everybody. And the other thing which I really believe is that don't reinvent the wheel. Anybody listening or watching us even later on, don't everything that you want to do, it's already done. <laughs> you know, somebody's done it. So why not to really get in their circle and, you know, and get them to really teach you and so forth like that. So it's beautiful. And, and inspiration. I mean, inspire. Everybody should really be happy to meet you again and again and again and make the biggest brand out there. You know, get it out there. All right, this next question is for Alex. Alex, uh, let's kind of dive into VAs and somebody watching this in the future after we edit it uh, and it goes out to wherever it goes. Um, you know, everybody talk is now the buzzword is VA, right? Everybody get a VA. Right. Um, but mm -hmm. let's kind of break down what we could be using a virtual assistant for. I think a lot of people just don't understand, like pretty much you can outsource your life. There's people that have, people doing uh their vas doing their bookkeeping paying you know ordering food and things just kind of give us some open our minds to like what vas could be used for efficiently uh for relatively low cost so that's a great question what could vas be used for the question really is what can you not use a va for so many people think vas as transactions making love making love we can't use it <laughs> okay <laughs> There you go. That's one thing, right? One thing. See? <laughs> but but you look at it, look at it this way. Most people think of virtual assistants as transactional. Oh, they made a logo for me. They created yeah. a newsletter for me. Mm -hmm. Right. I teach clients to look at VAs as transformational. Mm -hmm. They're part of your company, right? Yeah. They have to yeah. know your mission your vision, your core values, yeah. what you stand for. Now, when you first hire a VA, people are asking me, well, Alex, what do you, what, what am I going to have my VA do? Well, first off, we need to be smart enough as business owners to understand we can't do everything. Yeah. What are we doing on the computer or on the phone that could be delegated? For example, we hop on a Zoom call. Let's say 30 people are on there. I take a screenshot, I shoot it over to my VA. My VA takes LinkedIn and start hitting people up and schedule individual yeah. meetups and put spit my Calendly out there, 
she then confirms everyone the day before to make sure, and she puts them on my calendar. So now my calendar is all set, right? That could be yeah. one thing that you do. Personally, I have an executive assistant, virtual assistant. You know, we have video editors. All in all, I have 12 full-time VAs that work for me and our businesses. But for example, just what kind of life would I have and how is it different just on the personal side? My personal VA schedules my haircuts, okay? Every two weeks on the dot, okay? Schedules my haircuts. She schedules car maintenance. She mm -hmm. calls them, tell them I'm coming. All I got to do in the morning is drop off the key, Uber out of there. She pays for it. I drop in. I say, hey, guys, I'm here to pick this up. I'm done, right? Orders me food. My wife, bless her heart, on a regular basis, she brings me lunch, okay, to the office when I'm there. On the days that I am not there or, or she's not there, my VA has three restaurants. Out of those three restaurants, there's four items each that she <laughs> understands what I like. All I have to tell her, hey, Ann, I don't have lunch today. We're right around 12 to 1230. Lunch is going to be there. Right? Love it. Love so it. the question really is, is how, what, what can you do on the phone, on the computer that can be delegated out from bookkeeping to payroll to tracking KPIs in our company? Yeah. Our VAs are able to track all that at the end of the week. Let's have a session. Let's go through these numbers, right? I have a VA director. Mm -hmm. She is my top VA. That is my brand strategist that works with all the other VAs between mm -hmm. webinars, creating webinars, all the slideshows, right? A lot of times when my VAs are like, well, well how do you want this picture or post to, mm -hmm. to look? I send them a picture. I press the record button. I say, hey, Ann. I want the audience to get this out of this picture. Boom. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. Right? So everything Excellent. is efficiency. Excellent. This is so great. What you said, you know, efficiency is the key. Because we are our own VAs, by the way, during the day. If you want to know you have an assistant, I always say that. You have an assistant. And people say, no, I don't. I said, no, no, no. Look in the mirror in the morning. Because <laughs> during you. the day, it's you, it's you. Because during the day, you're working $1,000 an hour job when you're talking to clients and things and really productive thinking and all. When you're doing mundane work, that's, you know, it's just time. Then you're working for $25 an hour or $5 an hour. So it's such a big thing. You could delegate and bring time back in your life for productive activities, we call it, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'll, about... I'll add to it, Bo, if, okay, uh, if you don't mind. Is, Please. Yeah. So we yeah. use we use our VAs to do a lot of development as well. Our VAs are extremely talented in uh, like building landing pages, funnels, websites. They mm -hmm. understand how to use ChatGPT to get copy. Uh, one, of our, one of my VAs is actually from Pakistan, and she's an amazing copywriter, right? Uh, she par help, part times helps me write my blogs, which mm -hmm. I still write, but she goes and makes them better, <laughs> or yep. vice versa. Yep. And uh, like automations, a lot of the automations that we do with all of our training programs and our courses, hey, by the way, show up at Tuesday at X time, we're doing this uh, bonus thing, I can just text her and say, hey, I need this done. And she knows exactly what to what to say. We have these standards, you know, no more than seven words per text. So our texts don't have these super long things, no links in a text unless requested. So like once you teach them these things, they don't, they don't do silly stuff. It just is educating mm -hmm. as if, as if they were a friend of yours, and you wanted them to do well. I think that with your VAs, like just treat them like an actual business partner or associate and then train them that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but the better you get at hiring, the more talented they are when you get them in the first place. Like all of our VAs are smarter than me. They're faster than me. They're, they're more ambitious <laughs> than me. You share their culture, you share the culture of the company and they're more excited about it than I am. And it, it's uh, everything Alex just said is like, um, I really, I really resonate with that. Yeah. It's, it's always crazy when I, when it's, like even if you not, don't have a full time VA or part time VA, and people don't even they're not even using like Fiverr or any out, any outsourcing. It's crazy yeah. to me. I've outsourced crazy. for like the last fifteen years of my life. I sure. love outsourcing. I, I want to take this question, kind of talk to um, bring this to Jeff and talk about no bad days. Where mm -hmm. you know today is 
January 1st, right? It's the first of the year, 2024. And I think all of us, like, I'm going to hit the gym after we get the recording. I was going to get I'm going to walk, yes. <laughs> right, but, but like, I, I this year I'm, like, more determined than ever just to be consistent and stick with it, right? Like, well, going to the gym, I'm, I stick with it. It's the food. I love to yeah. binge eat. I love to go out to dinner. <laughs> um, but, like, today's the day, right? Like, everybody's all fired up. They, they're going to, you know, they're setting their intentions. Most people say, hey, tomorrow I'm going to start. They're not because they're all hung over. Where do we go? Because I know we all struggle. You know, even uh, the most successful people in the world are struggling with things, demons, and, the, you know, we all have issues to a certain degree, right? There's no question about that. I think you know, consistency, right, Bo? That's what you're talking about, right? Accountability and consistency. And, you know, if we can just definitely don't have a big list of things I want to change. See, I can only change very few things in life. Very, very few things. And the habits are formed when we are consistent with that same the mindset is number one, of course. You know, if I want to have a different year 2024, I got to have a little bit different mindset. If I keep on having the same mindset, like you said, Brendan Bouchard, right? You just mentioned yesterday. He said, hey, leave a lot of things behind in 2023. Don't take that baggage with you this year. You know, right. and yeah, what was no, that? No, I agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm diverting here with, with Jeff, though, like, the thing is, yeah. though, like you, you, these days come on, right? And this can be like those days come on where, like, oh shoot, I didn't know I owed this twenty thousand dollars. You know, yeah. oh shoot, I didn't know that that happened to me like last week, or you know, I and it, it's like, oh my god, like who wants to cut a twenty thousand dollar check that they didn't know about, right? Yeah. Um. And then you know, then I'm having problems with the property management. Those days come in, Jeff, and like you could easily have that ruin that day, the next day, the following day, yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, but I think what you kind of, your no bad days concept, just walk people through the framework of like, yeah. look, this is how you should look at things. Cause we're all going to have bad days, but get in this framework. Let's to, to progress. Yeah. So you know. yeah, for sure. So um, first of all, I, uh, I reject what you said last that we're all going to have bad days. Cause I don't have bad days. Right. Mm. That's the starting point. I made a choice when I was 17 never to have another bad day. It took about a month before I was able to successfully accomplish that. But since, you know what, I'm 45 now. So it's, you know, over long that it's 28 years since I've had a bad day. That's not, no, to your point though, bad stuff's going to happen. You're going to have to write that $20,000 check. You're going to get diagnosed with leukemia or melanoma. I've had both of those things happen to me. You're going to go bankrupt. You're going to um, get divorced when you weren't expecting it. All that stuff has happened to me in the last 28 years. Jeff, uh, I want to man. put on record, I reject all of those things. It's not going to happen to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love yeah, fair yeah. enough, man. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I hope yeah. none of those things happen to you, right? But like, mm -hmm. but the, there's going to be bad stuff that happens to you. Like, you're going to have yeah. good things happen to you. You're going to have bad things happen bad to you. Things. But what you have to do is you have to take that step back and you have to recognize that right now, as we sit here, someone is having the very best day of their life. Someone else yeah. is having the the worst day of their life. Worst day, yeah. Right? So the day itself is neither objectively good or bad. It's just how those individuals are receiving the day that controls how that day is for them. And so once you recognize that, it becomes free. You know, um, there, there's this concept of radical responsibility. And the idea is, and, and I got this originally from, you know, I, I've thought about it this way for a long time, but I think Hal Elrod has this quote that really clarified it, right? So Hal Elrod wrote, um, the moment you accept 100% responsibility for everything in your life is the moment you can change anything in your life. And, and for me, that that sort of underlines how it is. You know, uh, I got diagnosed with leukemia. That's objectively not a good thing, right? But I had a choice of how to respond to that. I could have crawled into the corner and died. I could have let it ruin my day. I could have let it ruin my week. I could have done all kinds of things. But instead, I said, okay. All right, I have to deal with this. How do I turn this around? I remember the the night, the first night I was in the hospital, about ten o'clock at night, when I was first told I had leukemia. About eleven o'clock at night, my brother came to see me in the hospital, and he said, "I bet today is a bad day." Almost like he he was like excited that I finally was going to have a bad day. You know, it already been like ten years of no bad days, and that boy, like thirteen years into my streak, and I said, you know. I didn't even find out till 10 o'clock at night. There was a lot of good stuff that happened before that. So this day was pretty good on average. 
you know, and the next day was a little bit harder. You know, the, then the whole day I knew I was happy, you know, I was having leukemia and I thought I was going to die. My white blood cell count was 258,000. You know, I mean, it was ridiculous, um, way higher than it's supposed to be. And um, there was a shift change about one o'clock in the afternoon and this nurse walked in and she looked at me and she said, oh my God, Jeff, I'm so sorry to see you here. And I went, oh my God, Shelly, I'm so happy to be here. Because it was a babysitter of mine from when I was a child that I hadn't seen in like a decade. And I was just like, wow. I'm really excited to see this person right now. And, you know, you might say, well, that's ridiculous. Like, on one hand, you have leukemia, you think you're dying. On the other hand, you see a childhood babysitter. Like, how can that be enough to make the day good? But the thing is, it felt good in the moment. And, and if I want to be objective about it, when mm -hmm. I look back at that day, that's probably the most important best day of my life because one, I learned that it didn't matter what was going on in the external stuff. It was all about what was going on in my brain that mattered. And, and that clarified it for sure that day. Cause if you can go through that, you're, you're not going to have bad days. The second thing that happened is that's the day that changed the course of my life. I would never be here on this zoom right now with you guys. If it wasn't for that day, because I would be a reasonably successful bankruptcy attorney in West Michigan. And now I'm a, very successful real estate investor and I live in Puerto Rico and I don't have to worry about anything really. And like Bo said earlier, if I didn't want to do anything the rest of my life, I wouldn't have to. I don't think that wouldn't make me happy. People like us, all the people on this call um, yeah. aren't going to be happy. If you, you, there's no magic point where you're like, Oh, I'm successful now. I don't have to work anymore because, because if you do that, you know, it, you lose the drive that made you happy in the mm -hmm. first place. The reason we're able to become successful is we have a focused goal that we're trying to achieve. Now, we might shift what our goals are. You know, mm -hmm. I shifted to doing more writing and more podcasting and more motivational speaking, um, you know, and less real estate. Mm -hmm. But but I, I'm not, I have to do something with my time. I have to be producing something that's going to benefit myself and benefit the world. Because the thing is, I, I really <clears> believe that um, there's only one of me. And if I don't do the things that God put me here to do, I'm cheating myself, but I'm also cheating my family, my community and the whole world of whatever great things I could have done. So that's why I came up with that billion good <clears throat> days goal. You know, I don't know if I'll achieve mm. it or not, but if Love I can it. make one person have one more good day, I change their life. Yes. And if I change yeah. one person's life, I've changed the world. And if I can do that a billion times, that's amazing. And it's a ripple effect, right? Like Vinny's yep. going to go tell people, hey, you don't have to have a bad day. Somebody watching this video who I've never yep. met is going to yep. say, you know what? I'm going to try that. And maybe they only have 20% more good days. It doesn't even work completely. It's still more good yes. days. And, yep. um, you know, I wish there was a way I could track it. I've actually been working on an algorithm and a new website that, that hopefully will give us a little idea. I mean, it's never going to be 100% accurate, but, but mm -hmm. um, very soon I'm going to have a website out, a billion good days. Dot com. I mean, it, it, I've already registered. Like it. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So beautiful. I know we are towards the end of our hour. You know, love to have uh, any last comments, Brother Qualter, Brother Alex. I, I have one Bo. more question for the yeah. group, each, each of them. Qualter, we'll start with you, if you don't mind. Um, any, what has been kind of uh, any mentors in your life um, that, or books mm. that really kind of changed you? Uh, any courses or anything that you've done in over your career that really you would love to tell people, Hey, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Start with this book or start here. There are five foundational books that I think are absolutely necessary for anybody who's looking to get into real estate or just financial freedom. And in those five, they start in specific order. So the first one everybody's read is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It kind of brings you yep. into the space, opens yep. your mind to the concept of you know leverage, liabilities, debt, assets. Uh, the second one is Richest Man in Babylon. It's a more principle base. You get to a little deeper into the savings, into the making money, into the, the love of work, like being passionate about work. And the third one, once you've kind of gotten into that or you start getting into mindset, which is Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker, that book mm -hmm. really talks about the, the 17 principles of money, like how money works and the mindset, the blueprints, the uh, the reasons that your childhood was framed you to be at this level of income instead of where you want to be. Uh, then as you start getting deeper into that, that's a very tactical book. You shift into uh, the next one, which everybody in this call has definitely read is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yeah, that yeah. book is fundamental. Every millionaire, every multimillionaire, every billionaire on the planet has read this book, but you're not ready for it until you've gone through these other ones because these other ones kind of like tease that things are wrong, like there's a better way to do things that are very um, physical world-based. And then once you get into <clears> uh, thinking, uh, thinking we're rich, it's like 
really, you know, up there in this like crazy mindset. Half of this doesn't even seem believable. And then the final one is The Science of Getting Rich. And The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles is kind of the book that all of these books were based off of. You know, he studied Emerson and, mm -hmm. you know, Emerson was kind of the, the beginning of all of it. So those those five foundational books have mm -hmm. actually transformed my life with the last one being the most important to me. Uh, but in business, the, the final book I'll give you is The One Thing by Gary Keller. It I go yeah, back to it and every time one. I go back to it, I just, I, I face palm myself. I'm like, man, I can't believe I missed this again. Like, how I got to go back to the basics. What is the one thing I can do today such that by doing it, everything is easier or unnecessary. And um, then there's Vinny's books. Love it. Positivity brings profitability. <laughs> he's, he's been a game changer in my life. Before I was thinking, uh, you know, millionaire, build millionaires. And now uh, he's got me focused on a $5 billion portfolio, which will take me, you know, maybe five years, a decade to do. But uh, I have the right mentors. I have the right people around me. He's, he's constantly introducing me to right, great people. And I think it really does just take one good relationship. Like, you know, I wouldn't have been hanging out with you guys if it wasn't for Vinny today. Uh, uh, you know, texting me and saying, hey, you're going to be there. So <laughs> it takes good friends, you know? <laughs> All right. Oh. Let, let, thank you. That was good. I love how you stacked them too. I've never had somebody I loved that it. stacked yeah. the books in order, which is amazing. So yeah. I'm going to take a note from that actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alex, we'll have you follow that, which is going to be hard to follow yeah. up because he was, he, he was definitely prepared for a question that I did, he didn't know was coming. He, he was prepared, man. He yeah. was. Yeah. I'll say that the, the <clears throat> book that really impacted my life early on in business was the Grant Cardone's 10X book. 10X. That, that is, book. when yeah. I when I read that, it completely changed. Because in order to get into the nitty gritties, before you get into that, there you go. Before you get into that, mm -hmm. you got to have the mindset, that growth yeah. mindset. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that was a huge growth mindset, kick in the butt. Like, oh, dang, they can do it. You can do it yeah. too. Yeah. And also... The next book, once I got into learning how the importance of people, mm -hmm. how important that is in a company, in relationships, is The 21 Laws of Leadership by John mm -hmm. Maxwell. John Maxwell, amazing. Yeah. Yep. And, and that was like, yeah. wow, The 21 Laws. Okay. Yeah. And I started diving into each law and the, <clears throat> of the law of sacrifice what that we talked about yeah. is in there. Right. But that leads allows me to lead people better, to become a better leader. I'm sure if Jeff wasn't a good leader, he wouldn't be able to work out of Puerto Rico. Right. And and all of you guys as well wouldn't be able to operate <laughs> the businesses that you guys are operating. So those are like my top two. Awesome. Let's roll this question to Vinny and then we'll <clears throat> finish with Jeff. Love to, love to. You know, two books which really have impacted. Well, there are so many of them. W.J. Schwartz, Magic of Thinking Big. I could go back. Of course, Dale Carnegie's, you know, how to win, influence people and win friends, right? I think that's the one. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. I think there are, again, amazing books we have been discussing. That's on top of, you know. And then, of course, you know, so many other mentors out there, right? Uh, let's go to Jeff, brother. You want to add oh, some? Yeah, sure. sure. So you guys, well, have I, I gotta like... add. I gotta add the mentor that Vinny forgot to mention. Uh, Dave Lindall, right? Dave Lindall, oh, yes. the first yes. guy that you spent six figures Two with. Books. Two That's books. Right. Oh my gosh! You know, uh, multifamily millionaires. Dave, great, great book, brother. And then the other one was. Uh, Emerging markets. I remember I highlighted it totally 17 years back. I mean, that sort of got me into this whole, you know, multifamily syndication. Jeff, go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so okay. Um, it's really hard to follow up on all that because you literally <laughs> named like every, like all, every book that, that was mentioned, I've read and I endorsed them all. Like every yeah. single one of them. Um, so so I, I'm not going to say anything about those. But um, but for me, um, a book that, that wasn't mentioned, Vinny, and I've never, I don't think, told you this, but I'll, t I'll tell you it now, um, uh, was uh, the uh, Syndication Made Easy book that you wrote. Um, oh, because oh I will gosh. tell you, um, I got into syndicating because my partner Brian and I were talking about your book. Um, I didn't even know what syndication was. He said, you need to read this book. He handed me a copy of your book. I read it and said, huh, 
first of all, I need to be friends with Vinny Chopra. He sounds amazing. And number two, I need to get into syndication because this is a way to expand my business beyond what I'm able to grow right now. You know, we had a few small oh, apartment wow. buildings then, but we didn't have, you know, the portfolio I have now. And I wouldn't have it if I didn't learn about syndication from your book. Um, oh, there, there's one other book that I'd mentioned as well, and that is um, uh, Crushing It in Commer Apartments and Commercial Real Estate by Brian Murray. Um, that book... Mm. Um, fundamentally changed how I thought about real estate. It's what caused me to make the transition from single family to multifamily and commercial properties. Um, once I wrapped my head around that inverse relationship between cap rates and value, I said, whoa, this is like, um, <laughs> I can do the Burr strategy on like, you know, like on steroids with small multifamilies by buying these things, you know, lowering the expenses, raising the income and then refinancing them, just repeat it over and over again. Um, and th that, that concept plus the syndication concept together uh, changed my, the way that I invest completely. So thank you for writing that book. Oh, no, thank you. And, you know, I will say to everybody watching us, listening to us, you could do wonders by helping other people, family, friends, everybody. Don't be really thinking that syndication is a bad word. It's the art of just getting friends, like-minded people together to do bigger things, to buy bigger things, and then you can make high returns for yourself and them. Them, actually, because 80 to 90% or 70% of the upside goes to your friends. They will thank you so much for it. So thank you, Jeff, for saying that, you know. So, uh, the art of raising money is amazing. Go ahead, bro. That would be a yeah. good book title, too. You know, the, the Art of War, but the Art of yeah. It would be a great book with, with yeah. Vinny with the samurai sword, like a shadow. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about some new books. Uh, yes. Alex Ramosi, I think he, this guy at 32 or 33 years old, this mm -hmm. guy has a marketing brain. I, I enjoy marketing, branding, and like, I love catching fish. So that's where I get the most joy. Yeah. <laughs> I yep. get the most yep. joy from catching fish. Yes. And so like, I love mm -hmm. the fact that I can put out a video and I have people find that video and then book a call with me. To me, that's yep. fun. Yep. I call that hunting and fishing. So mm -hmm. I like this book going to like keeping it simple, keeping your funnel full and closing deals, right? Because I'm more in the sales line of, I mean, I own real estate and businesses yep. and stuff, but I do mm -hmm. sales for a living. And I like, I don't even call it sales because I just educate people and they buy shit or I that's help them the facilitate stuff. So that that's a great book. And the other guy I follow that I really like recently, his name is Daniel Priestley. He's got um, a book called Oversubscribed and a book called The Key Person of Influence. And I really base my career now as a key person of influence and in doing events. He does, he used to do a lot of introductory events and have, big, you know, that's how he made his living. Anyway, it's a really sharp guy to follow. But as mm -hmm. you can see, most people on this panel are listening to books or reading books probably weekly, right? And so yeah. I think that's another big takeaway. Like, look, so there's so, so much information. You can go to YouTube and you can binge somebody that's really smart, right? And you can binge mm -hmm. them for two or three days. You can pick up a concept. I mean, you can start businesses right now. I mean, it's just an exciting time. And so... That's why yes. Vinny and I came up with the Crush 2024 idea. It's just really like we've got a lot of smart friends. We've got a mm -hmm. lot of people that enjoy sharing information, right? This is like the old t times, like when you, you know, go to the powwows and you would share, you know, where the, where the buffalo are. This is kind of what we're doing right now. This is the beginning. This is just the beginning. But look forward to please register. If you are listening to us, if you haven't registered, we would love to drop your email, that video clip one every day so 31 video clips and maybe we'll continue it in different random ways or different editing in february also because to form the habit we need to look at it consistently we got to practice we got to clarify focus and delegate to make our life rich why don't everybody just where can people follow you at and then we'll conclude yeah, we'll wrap it up yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, the easiest Alex, place to, to find me is you can go to <laughs> alchemistnation.com, uh, register for free. We're, I'm on there all the time or just Facebook. You know, Type in Walter Amarillo. I'm the only one out there aside from my dad. So the one with hair is not me. The one without hair is me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, all the social media platforms, really. And it's uh, I love talking to people, reaching out. 
you know, and it's, it's, that's what this is all about. I'm so glad that you guys, you know, have me on this call. It's all about sharing knowledge. I had a mentor that told me if you're not having knowledge to share, then what's the knowledge for? Right. So, so thank true, you for having so me. So true. You're so right. You know, Alex, they say in every town, there is one place where so much knowledge is wasted or it's there. It's the whole culmination. And that's in the cemetery. So many people have so many great ideas and things, but we die taking this in our brain and mind. So let's spread that word you know, in podcasts and books and everywhere, you could really make a big difference in transferring your knowledge down for legacy. Uh, Jeff, yeah. brother, how can people yeah, reach yeah. you? So, yeah. yeah, so I just realized now that I didn't have my full name on the screen. So hopefully uh, people can find me. It's Jeffrey Holst, H-O-L-S-T, um, like a holster, but without the E-R. So, um, and, I'm, and you can find me anywhere. Like I'm on all of the socials. I'm on everything from like, you know, TikTok to Be Real at Jeffrey Holst. Um, but mm-hmm. jeffreyholst.com is a great place to find me. Or if you're on Facebook, uh, <clears throat> Jeffrey Holst or the Last Life Ever private community, because we have the Last Life Ever podcast about moving the best version of your life. And he's been a guest on there. Um, yes. And uh, and that's, a, um, you know, we have a Facebook group where we interact and I'm always in that Facebook group interacting. So that's a great place to find me as well. Beautiful. Brother Bo is everywhere also, brother. Uh, yeah. Bo, how can people reach you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just go to, uh, and you go to bookwithbo.com, bookwithbo.com and schedule 15 yeah. minutes of strategy. If you want to mm-hmm. buy a business, you need financing, you want to buy a franchise, or you just mm-hmm. want to talk about how to structure financing, that's what I do. And mm-hmm. uh, I got a podcast on YouTube, which is Investor Financing Podcast. And I'm yeah. coming out with the second one, which is called the Own a Business Today Podcast. But yeah. That's, yeah. No, I, I think <clears throat> I love doing these kind of things because it, Actually, I do it selfishly because I get inspired. I love listening to everybody's stories and I always yeah. get fired up. Like I now I'm like, I'm so much more amped up to go to the gym. <laughs> I don't even need my freaking 20, my five hour energy. I'm going to go like crush the gym. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've never <clears throat> been so excited for a year like 2024. First, yeah. I'm having my my first child, which is, you know, mm-hmm. pretty exciting. Congratulations. And, and Congratulations. Scary. Yeah. <clears throat> And so it's just going to be an exciting year, really. And uh, just I'm I'm just one of the words I'm thinking is optimization. Everything is optimized. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I was talking to one of my health guys and listening to a podcast the other day, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go get my testosterone tested, right? Like, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to go see. I I haven't got blood work done probably in 15 years, guys. No There's, way. Yeah, oh I never gosh. go to the doctors, wow. and like that's not. I know it's not a good thing to do, <laughs> but I'm like, all right, I'm going to start optimizing. Let's check my testosterone count now that I'm in my 40s. <laughs> Let's like, let's just be like as optimized in a healthy way as possible. I think why wouldn't I want to do that? If it's healthy for you and you have low testosterone or whatever the case is, right? Like I'm thinking optimization is the key right now. Get the right sleep, the right yep. food, diet, mm-hmm. de-stress, take vacations, enjoy life. And that's like 2024. And then saying no, saying no. I say yes I my love whole life. That. I'm saying yes. no now. And that's the big thing for me. Say no, sorry, you can't help you. Huge. Let's all learn to say no. There is a book also out there. It's so important that we buy back time. And I hope everybody watching us again, thankful to all the panels. And bro, Bo, I really want to thank you. How much joy you have brought in my life. And Vinny and Bo show, we do it on Fridays. Abundance Mindset with Brother Gualter on Thursday. Mentoring the youth on Wednesday with Grant and Emerson. We do it, Jim Grant. And then also Daisy uh, Money Show, which will be starting on Tuesdays with me. I'm Vinny Chopra. You can just see me all over the channel also with YouTube and Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. LinkedIn, Vinny Chopra. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you. God bless you all. And let's make it and crush 2024 in big way. We can do it.